Hello students, in the previous part, we stopped in the middle of page 80. So we will begin from where we stopped last class. Remember in the, in the beginning of this page, the bishop had told his sister the importance of the candlesticks to him. When Persone told him that he will sell the candlesticks next, the bishop said he will never do that because the candlesticks are so dear to him, as it was a gift from their late mother just before she died. So hearing this, Persom urges her brother not to say any more, because it will break her heart. So she asks him to bless her, so she goes to bed. After Persom went to bed, even though it was already 12 o'clock at night, the bishop decided to sit in the sitting room and read. So as he was about to do so, someone came from behind with a long knife. Okay, it is a convict. So let's read. Convict. If you call out, you are a dead man. And then the bishop said, But my friend, as you see, I am reading. Why should I call out? Can I help you in any way? The convict said angrily, hoarsely, I want food. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything for three days. Give me food quickly, quickly, curse you. Then the bishop eagerly, okay, he said, But certainly, my son, you shall have food. I will ask my sister for the keys of the cupboard. So, what was the convict's demand? His first demand was food. He said, I want food. I haven't eaten anything for three days. So the bishop said, I will certainly give you food. We have food in the house. I will give you. But I don't have the keys to the cupboard. So let me call my sister. So as he was rising and was about to call Persong, the convict said, sit down. Okay, so the bishop said with a big smile on his face, the bishop was not at all afraid of him. Now why did the convict commanded him to sit down? The main reason is that he will be caught again. Okay, he's afraid that if the bishop calls someone else, you know, his chance of getting out of the house is very less. So he did not want that to happen. So here he says, give me, give me the food. Where is the food? Okay, very hoarsely, very angrily. Then the bishop said to himself, I wish Persom would not lock the cupboard. Then he said, Come, come, my friend. You have nothing to fear. My sister and I are alone here. So the bishop told the convict that he has nothing to fear as it is only him and his sister in the house. Then the convict said, How do I know that? The bishop, Why? I have just told you. So convict looks long at the bishop. Okay, he looks at him. He's doubting if the bishop is telling the truth or a lie. Then the convict, hum, I risk it. So the bishop going to the door. But mind, play me false. And as sure as there are devils in hell, I'll drive my knife through your heart. I have nothing to lose. So after the bishop convinced the convict that there is no one else in the house except his sister, okay, so he went to get the keys. And as he was going to the door, the convict reminded him not to play any games here. He said, play me false, I will, you know, drive my knife through your heart, okay. So in page 81, the bishop said, you have your soul to lose, my son. It is of more value than my heart. So he calls for Persom. The convict stands behind him with his knife ready. And Persom from her room shouted, Yes, brother, what do you want? Okay. So the bishop said, Here is a poor traveler who is hungry. If you are not undressed, will you come and open the cupboard and I will give him some supper? Hearing this, Persom shouted from her room, What? At this time of night? A pretty business, truly. 
Are we to have no sleep now, but to be at the beck and call of every near do well who happens to pass? Here near do well, as I've written, means lazy people. So she thought it is some people asking for the bishop's help again. So she's very angry, okay? She said, Are we not to have any sleep tonight? Then the bishop said, But Persom, the traveler is hungry. So Persom said, Oh, very well, I am coming. Persom enters, sees the knife in the convict's hand, and she is frightened. So she said, Brother, what is he doing with the knife? Then the bishop said, The knife? Oh, well, you see, dear, perhaps he may have thought that I... I had soldiers. Okay, he laughs. Then Persom said, Brother, I am frightened. He glares at us like a wild beast. Then the convict says, Hurry, I tell you. Give me food or I'll stick my knife in you both and help yourself. The bishop, Give me the keys, Persom. Then she gives them to him. And now, dear, you may go to bed. So after Persom gives the key to the bishop, the bishop asks her to go back to bed. Persom going, as Persom was about to go, the convict springs in front of her, okay, stopping her. And the convict, stop, neither of you leave this room till I do. So she looks at the bishop. Then the bishop said, Persom, will you favor this gentleman with your company at supper? He evidently desires it. So the bishop asks Persom to accompany the convict as he eats his dinner or his food. Okay? So Persom, you know, frightenedly said, Okay, brother, very well. So she sits down at the table, staring at the two. The bishop, here is some cold pie and a bottle of wine and some bread. Okay, this is important. You may be asked. What did the bishop offer him? He was offered some cold pie, a bottle of wine, wine and some bread. So the convict, put them on the table and stand below it so that I can see you. So the bishop does so and opens drawer in table, taking out knife and fork, looking at the knife in convict's hand. After the food was laid on the table, the bishop gives the convict knife and fork so he looks at the knife and said my knife is sharp he was admiring it and as for the forks he said we don't use forks in prison so he throws it away now persom on hearing the word prison she was shocked she was afraid okay now she knows that this guest is not any ordinary guest so in page 82 the convict starts eating his meal like an animal, here it says. Now why is he eating like an animal? Remember he had been starving for three days. So this is the first meal he's eating in three days. So he's eating like an animal. Then he looks at the door and said, What was that? Why the devil do you leave the window unshuttered and the door unbarred so that anyone can come in? So he closes the door. Okay. Then the bishop said, That is why they are left open. The convict, well, they are shut now. Then the bishop says, for the first time in 30 years. So the bishop never closes his door, even at night, so that people can come in whenever they liked, if they needed help. Okay, so here he said, we never close our doors. This is the first time it's been closed in 30 years. Then the convict eats very wildly and throws the bone on the floor. He throws a bone on the floor, and Persom shouted, Oh, my nice clean floor! Then the bishop picks up the bone and puts it on the plate. The convict said, You're not afraid of thieves? The bishop, I am sorry for them. Then the convict laughs, Sorry for them? And then he drinks from bottle. Okay, remember he had some wine, so he drinks from bottle. That's a good one. Sorry for them. And he keeps laughing. Okay, he was finding this funny. Then suddenly, looking at the bishop, he said, What the devil are you? And the bishop said, I am a bishop. 
This made him laugh even harder. A bishop, holy virgin, a bishop. Well, I'm damned. Okay. Then the bishop said, I hope you may escape that, my son. Persom, you may leave us. This gentleman will excuse you. Then Persom said, Leave you with? Now she did not want to leave her brother alone with this convict, since he was wild, okay? She was afraid that he might do something bad to him. But the bishop said, Please, okay? He urges her to leave. He said, My friend and I can talk more freely then. By this time, owing to his starving condition, the wind has affected the convict. Okay, so the convict said, What's that? Leave us. Yes, yes, leave us. Good night. I want to talk to the bishop, the bishop. Ha <laughs> ha. So even the convict, you know, due to the effect of the wine, he is now drunk. So he doesn't mind uh, letting Persom go away. So he lets her go. He even said good night to her. He said, I want to talk to the bishop. So she leaves. Okay. Now, the convict to himself said the bishop, ha ha, well, I am. Do you know what I am? Loudly, okay, shouting, he said, do you know who I am? Then the bishop said, I think one who has suffered much. The convict suffered? Suffered? My God, yes. But that's a long time ago. Ha ha. That was when I was a man. Now I am not a man. Now I am a number. Number 15729. And I've lived in hell for 10 years. Now due to the effect of the wine, now the convict started pouring out his story. Okay, he said, I was once a man. But now I am not a man. I am a number. Remember, uh, in prison, okay, they don't call people by names. They give them numbers. So his number was 15729. This is why he says, I am not a man. I am now a number. And he also says that he had lived in hell, meaning prison, okay, for 10 years. The bishop, tell me about it, about hell. So the bishop asked the convict to tell him more about prison. Hearing this, the convict said, why? He was suspicious, okay? He said, do you want to tell the police to set them on my track? Then the bishop said, no, I will not tell the police. Moving on to the next page. The convict looks at the bishop earnestly. Okay, then he said, I believe you. But damn me if I know why. Then the bishop, laying his hand on the convict's arm, says, Tell me about the time, the time before you went to hell. On the request of the bishop, now the convict will narrate his story on how he landed in hell. Okay, on how he landed in prison. This is a very important part, so listen carefully. It's so long ago I forgot, but I had a little cottage, there were vines growing on it, they looked pretty with the evening sun on them, and, and there was a woman, she was, she must have been my wife, yes, yes, I remember, she was ill, we had no food, I could get no work, it was a bad year, and my wife, my Janet, was ill, dying, so I stole to buy her food. Then the bishop gently pats his head. They caught me. I pleaded to them. I told them why I stole. But they laughed at me. And I was sentenced to ten years in the prison hulks. Ten years in hell. The night I was sentenced, the gaoler told me. Told me Janet was dead. Okay, he starts crying. Ah, damn them, damn them. God curse them all. He sings on the table, sobbing. The convict begins his story by telling the bishop that he had a little cottage a long time ago where he lived with his wife, Janet. He said that year, my wife was sick. 
I had no work. It was a very bad year, so we couldn't buy food. And since my wife Janet, my sick wife, was dying, I stole to buy her food. Okay, he said, this is how I was caught. He further tells him that he pleaded the policeman or he pleaded the authority to let him go because the reason he stole was not because of any bad intention. Okay, he said he stole to buy food for his sick wife. But they did not believe him. They laughed at him. So he landed in the prison for 10 years. The night he was sent to prison, the gaoler even told him that his wife Janet was dead. So thinking of this, you know, he begins to sob. He begins to cry and sinks his head on the table, sobbing. After the bishop heard the story of how the convict landed in prison, he now wants to know how was he treated in prison. So he said, tell me about the prison ship, about hell. Then the convict said, tell you about it? Look here, I was a man once. I'm a beast now, and they made me what I am. They chained me up like a wild animal. They lashed me like a hound. I fed on filth. I was covered with vermin. I slept on boards and I complained. They lashed me again. For ten years, ten years, oh God, they took away my name. They took away my soul and they gave me a devil in its place. But one day they were careless. One day they forgot to chain up their wild beasts and he escaped. He was free. That was six weeks ago. I was free, free to starve. Okay, so the convict said, I was a man once, but now I am a beast. Prison had made me into a beast. Okay, he said, I was chained up like a wild animal. They lashed me like a dog and I was fed on filth, meaning I was not given proper food. The food I was given was dirty okay and he was covered with insects he even slept on boards he had no mattress okay he slept on hard boards and whenever he complained they would lash him even more for 10 years he said i suffered and they not only that they took away my name they took away my soul and they gave me a devil in its place he said but how did he escape? He said, one day they were careless. Okay, they forgot to lock up the wild beast. That is him. Okay, they forgot to chain up the wild beast and he escaped. So uh, for six weeks, now he is a free man. But he said, I was free, but free to starve. Meaning he's free, but he had no food. So the bishop said, to starve? Yes, to starve. They feed you in hell, but when you escape from it, you starve. They were hunting me everywhere, and I had no passport, no name, so I stole again. I stole these rags, I stole my, daily, my food daily, I slept in the woods, in barns, anywhere. I dare not ask for work, I dare not go into a town to beg, so I stole. And they have made me what I am. They have made me a thief. God cursed them all. He empties the bottle and throws it into the fire, smashing it. Okay, so the convict said, I am now free, but I don't have food. Now the reason is, you know, being a convict, he is not free to do what he likes. He cannot find job. He has no passport, he has no name, okay? So he said, I keep stealing and I sleep in the woods, I sleep in the barns, anywhere. So, you know, this is his story. Then the bishop said, my son, you have suffered much, but there is hope for all. Then the convict, hope, hope, ha ha, he starts laughing. On hearing the story of the convict, the bishop was touched. 
he felt sorry for him. So he said, You have walked far, you are tired, so lie down and sleep on the couch, and I will get you some blankets. So he gave him a place to rest. This is where we will stop for now.